Good morning. Would you stand and sing with us? The hair that once was crowned with thorns Is crowned with glory now The Savior knelt to wash our feet now at his feet we bow The one who wore our sin and shame Now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love Now shines for all to see Your name, your name is victory All praise will rise to Christ our King Your name, your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. The fear that held us now gives way to Him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross Is now alive in me And your name, your name is victory All praise will rise to Christ our King Your name, your name is victory By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive to declare your victory The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your spirit I will rise To the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive To declare your victory The resurrected King is resurrecting me by your spirit i will rise from the ashes of defeat the resurrected king is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me the resurrected king is resurrecting me The tomb where soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain our God has robbed the grave Our God has robbed the grave In your name, your name is victory All praise will rise to Christ our King All praise, your name is victory All praise will rise to Christ our King All praise will rise To Christ our King All praise will rise
sometimes it's so easy to be humbled. And every time I sing the song, I can't help but be humbled. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from your enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer afraid to fear because I am a child of God and I'm no longer a slave to fear because I am a child of God my mother's womb you have chosen me and love has called my name I've been born again to your family your blood flows through my veins and I'm no longer a slave to fear A child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear But I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it my fears were drowned in perfect love You rescued me so I could stand and sing I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it My fears were drowned in perfect love you rescued me so I could stand and sing I am a child of God Cause I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God You can have a seat. just for kids. I'm Miss Sarah and I am at a really cool golf place. And all of these people are trying to hit the balls and put them into a target. Um, guys, I'm gonna do this later and I'm not sure I'm gonna make my targets. Um, people are kind of like that. There's a verse in the Bible in Proverbs 16:9 that says, in their hearts, human beings plan their lives but the Lord decides where their steps will take them. You guys, that's so true. So many times in life, we think that we're gonna make plans and we're gonna do things and they don't work out. Um, this pandemic is one of those things. I think a lot of us had plans at the beginning of the year that we thought we would do, be doing things and those things didn't work out. And we really just need to trust in God and know that um, He will lead our paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and He will make your path straight. And lean not in your own understanding. You guys have a great week, and try to stay on target.
Dear God, school is different now. I don't understand the world, but I know that when hard things happen, I should pray. So that's what I do. I pray that we can keep learning, whatever that looks like, and that we'll be together, even if it's in a whole new way. God, I pray as we step into the unknown future that you continue to show me things about myself and life, things I can't learn in books. Be with me, God, no matter how this year unfolds. Help us, God, to do our best every day. Even when every day isn't what we thought it would be. Keep us safe and keep us learning, one day at a time. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. So my wife saw Top Golf and she said, "Is she near IKEA?" That's where my mind goes. Yeah. Hey, we're glad that you're here today, and if you're a guest with us, we especially welcome you and are glad that you're here to worship with us uh, this morning. We also want to welcome those that are watching online that are live streaming with us. Thank you for live streaming with us and being with us. And if you are a guest with us, if this is the first time that you've live streamed with us, welcome. We're especially glad uh, that you're checking us out as well. And again, for anyone, uh, if you have questions about our church, you're wondering who we are and what we're all about, you can email me at andy at kccwire.com, and I'd be glad to have that dialogue with you. Uh, if you haven't yet, and if you'd like to, you can uh, see the uh, barcode or QR code, that's what it is, uh, on the little signs at the end of your rows or on the screen behind me. If you point your phone app at that, or your picture app, sorry, um, it'll bring up a link that you can click on that link and it'll bring up um, the notes and announcements and that kind of stuff uh, for this week's service. Um, Jeff Badgero is going to be bringing a word from uh, God's Word for us this morning, so I'm excited for you to hear from Jeff. I'm always, I've am always i been hanging out a lot with him this summer, doing some different projects at my house and as well as at other people's house, and I just love being around Jeff. And so we were going through Malachi. Kai, and he's like, man, I'm really enjoying this. I said, would you like to preach one of the sermons? And he just jumped all over it. So um, he's going to be bringing a message uh, from the Word today. But before I ask him to come up and, uh, and pray for our time of service, I wanted to do something. This week, school starts. And all the kids said? Yeah, a little more enthusiasm from the parents. All the parents said? Yeah, all right. Uh, so we're excited that the kids uh, are getting ready to go back to school. I'm excited because one thing, we're, we're gradually trying, kind of working through this pandemic, right? And this kids going back to school, to me, is one of those signals that, okay, we're, we're getting there. We're taking another step toward maybe getting back to some normalcy, so to speak. And uh, so I'm excited for school to get started, and uh, I just really want us to be in prayer for the kids um, that, yes, that they will learn, um, but they will be the social influencers as opposed to the influenced when it comes to Christianity uh, within the school. So if you are a child, stand up. I'm sorry, if you're a student getting ready to go back to school, stand up. And if you work in the schools in any capacity, stand up, all right? And that goes for you at home as well. If you're live streaming with us and you're uh, working the school or you're a student, stand right up, all right? Now, normally I would ask people to kind of gather around them, maybe put a, put a hand on a shoulder or something, but, you know, given the circumstances, I won't ask you to do that, okay? Uh, but you can kind of socially distance, all right? Point your hand in one of these folks' direction. And uh, let's, just, let's just pray and just ask God to bless them and watch over them as they start school. All right, Father God, um, as we start school this week, uh, we're excited for the kids because we want them to learn, we want them to grow. Uh, we're excited that they get to be back uh, with their friends. Um, and uh, it's just an exciting time in kids' lives. I know that there can be some anxiety about going and uh, understanding or meeting a new teacher and learning the ways of a new classroom and maybe ne meeting some new friends they've never met before. And so that can bring some fear and anxiety as well. Uh, so, Father, I pray that you would put all the kids' minds at ease, that they would just be comfortable and ready to go into their learning environment and to just learn and grow in their understanding. Um, but, Father, more than that, I pray so much for our kids. I pray that our kids would look for the kid that's sitting all alone at the cafeteria table. I pray that our kids would look for the kid that gets picked last in kickball. And I pray that they would care for those around them, that they would love as you loved, that they would love as they would want to be loved. And that, Father, we can just take the schools by storm with our Christian faith so that others will see and experience the love of Jesus by how our kids live and by how our families influence those in the school. Uh, be with Terry uh, as he leads the school district as the superintendent. Be with all the principals and all the different schools and the teachers and the administrators, the janitors, the uh, people that do the lunches, 
all of this, Father, we just, we just ask that you would bless these people as we so much thank them, want to thank them for the work that they do every single day to help our kids to learn and grow and create a safe environment for them. Father, bless them. Watch over them. Give the teachers wisdom when it comes to teaching these kids. May they have their eyes out for those kids that are maybe uh, struggling a little bit and just need an extra bit of love. Father, pray for the parents as the kids come home that uh, as parents we would uh, teach our kids that we would continue the educational process going at home and that we would not just rely only on the teachers and the school to teach our kids, but we would be involved with our kids' education and work with them and watch them grow and to strive that we would be praying for them every single day and praying for the teachers and praying for the principals and that we would not let this be a, just a one day we're praying as school gets started, but every single day we're just going to battle in prayer. And just asking you to watch over them, that you would cast out Satan and any of his demons that are trying to get into the school, and that you would just bless this place. And Father, may this community thrive, be a place where education thrives, and that we have a reputation for a place that kids are learning and growing, but they're loving and growing in community as well. Father, as we continue with our service, I pray a blessing on Jeff as he speaks your word, as he preaches your word, and I pray you'd give us uh, ears to hear and a heart that's ready to learn. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, let's give all of our teachers and kids a hand. And Jeff, come on down. Good morning, all. Often uh, when I read... This is kind of strange undressing in front of you. We are. Are we still there? Okay. When I read, I try to put myself in the place. Um, try to take one of the characters. Um, that's a dangerous thing. If you don't believe me, read The Rich Man and Lazarus. Um, you probably won't be the character you hoped you would have been. But I think in the Bible we need to look at that and don't get too discouraged when you find out you were the rich man and you didn't even have a name and you went to hell. Don't get too discouraged when you read that you were following that part because you're still alive and you can change. Um, there's a heaven and a hell. This message is going to be all over the place. There's five or six points. And uh, you're going to have to put them in order later because they're not in order now. And, uh, but I think a couple of them are okay. And uh, what I'm thinking about today is what if Malachi were here? What if the time travel? David Sheldon, if he was doing this message, if you all remember him from the old church building, he came and acted out the message. And man, it's impactful. I was trying to think, what's that guy's name? It came right to me. What's your wife's birthday? Uh, I'm not too sure. So, okay. Let's jump into Malachi chapter 3, verses Six through nine is what I see on here. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. So just before uh, Matthew, we'll probably find that. And Malachi doesn't pull any punches because he's speaking for God and God's speaking through him. So when we read the word, if you say, ooh, it's stepping on my toes, it meant to get your heart. Now this message is to me, it's kind of like if I have a prayer right now to God, you get to listen. So this message is to me, don't get all squirmy feeling, but you get to listen. And if it happens to be to you also, then that's fine. So Malachi 3, 6 to 9 says this to me. I am the Lord, I the Lord do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. There's nothing new under the sun. People have been sinning from, oh, this is the worst it's ever been. Well, just read about Lot. <laughs> you know, it's pretty ugly back then, too. I just read about the time when 3,000 people were stupid enough uh, not to understand that God said, who's for me and who's against me? And the earth swallowed them up. They're not the brightest people. Probably some of them snuck through and they got into our gene pool. But I don't know. Uh, then the scripture says, this is the point for today, return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? 
I love messages that have a how-to in it. I sometimes am frustrated when we get all the stuff and we never get the how-to because I'm a hands-on kind of guy. And I get a bunch of information and nobody showed me a video or let me grab a hammer and let me cut an angle on a truss. And they just told me what the angle was and I can't do it. But when I pick the saw up and I cut the angle two or three times and finally two of them come together, I got it figured out. So hopefully this is a hands-on message to you. Uh, the short answer. Okay, I think we're a little tolerant. If you look through Revelation, one of the biggest sins that God just despises, hey, you're doing okay over there, but you're tolerant to this. You're tolerant to Jezebel. And for that reason, I'm spitting you out of my mouth. I'm casting you out. So our tolerance, even though we may not be involved, but we tolerate a bunch of nonsense, God's frustrated with us. I'm not one for a lot of electronic gizmos. I struggle with new stuff. And I struggle with an immense amount of time with people in front of a screen. So if I've stepped all over my feet, I'm sorry. Uh, so one day I get the grandkids, like 11, 12 years ago. So you can figure out what grandkids they are. And you know, back then we want to watch an eight track video or something. I don't know, a big old thing that the machine's this big. And I'm like, no, we're not gonna do that. It's grandpa here, we're gonna read the Bible. So we just flip open the Bible and we get to Samuel. I'm like, okay, Grandpa, it's game on. Let's do something here. So we got some action figures, and I start explaining how Samuel got to the temple and why that Eli's kids weren't necessarily the main people in the event because they were naughty. And I'm talking to this eight-year-old grandson, and I'm like, okay, you understand being naughty, right? Yep. So what do you think we ought to do if somebody's naughty? What kind of punishment should they get? And he's thinking, like, what did I just do? I'm going to get punished. I mean, so it was like double jeopardy. It was like, do, 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 do. <laughs> he's going to have a really good answer. And we got these action figures. And what should we do to these two boys that weren't so They were kind of naughty. What should we do with them? He said, well, Grandpa, from the mouth of an eight-year-old, I think we need to put them in time out. They're not going to get the BBS. That's the Badgerill beer butt spanking. So if you, have, if you haven't been around Mr. Badgerill long back in the day, that's what they got. And uh, you, you didn't want any part of that. We're going to put them in timeout. I said, all right, you know, I'm going to be moderate. Grandpa's going to learn from you. How long should they be in timeout? Well, they got to say they're sorry, and they got to mean it. If that's all you got, you can leave. How do we return? You gotta say you're sorry, and you gotta mean it. Words of an eight year old. Didn't even have to look in a commentary. That's pretty good. So we gotta say we're sorry, we gotta mean it. Micah 6 8. If you turn to that, I think it's what does the Lord require of you? So if it's a requirement, and when you find it, tell me what's before it and what's after it. It's a little tiny book. Okay, it's before Nahum. It's, uh, so Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. There's a little song that goes to this. Some of you who used to go to Excelsior remember this song. He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So to return, we must have been there. And then we must have fallen. Now, how do we get back there? What's the road? Act justly. Don't call good bad. Don't call bad good. That's right from the scripture. To love mercy. Man, I love it when I step in it and I get forgiven. I mean, I just love it when I've been naughty. Carol puts me in time out. I tell her I'm sorry and she forgives me. I love that grace. But how about when somebody else gets pardoned? that you don't care for so much. We hear it on the news all the time, so-and-so did this, they went to prison. You're like, that's justice, that's good. And then somebody pardons them. And you're going, rrr, 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 rrr. Do we just love mercy for ourselves? I never thought about that till this week. If we love mercy, we just don't love it for us. We love it when other people get mercy. How about the guy down the road who stole from you? They locked him up in jail, and you're saying, it's about time that the police finally did something right. They locked him up in jail. And he gets pardoned. You're like, what is up with that? Maybe he said he was sorry, and he meant it. 
We just can't look at it from my view. We've got to have God's view inside of us that we love mercy for everyone and to walk humbly with your God. Humility is something when you think you got it, you lose it. But being just a bit humble is a good thing. I really practiced this for a long, long time because I used to be very much not humble. I did a lot of things in my life. I did this, I built that house, I did that, I did that. When I became a Christian, I really tried to be more humble and say, we did this and we're going here to the point that I'd get a service call and say, well, as soon as we're done with this job, we're going to go to the other job. And the secretary said, who's with you? I said, God. She said, well, you and God better get over there because their ice cream is melting, you know. So, but have a little bit more we in your life instead of just I, I, I. A little bit of humility. Sin cannot enter heaven. We've all sinned. Romans 3.23. I have some other numbers. I didn't ask anybody to cue these at a particular time. So if we have some numbers, maybe. Hey, help me out with that. What's that say? Louder? How about the next one? This is a vision test. Are you sure? One more. One more. Okay, let's run through them again. How about the first one? How about 33, 34, the next one, 57, 60, she's got it, 57, 60, how about the next one, now there's a scripture, 77, 80, that says we must obey the authorities, I've thought on that a lot today too, you know God was the authority, I think Mike caught it. <laughs> Uh, he was the king of kings, and a bunch of foolish people like us said, we want an earthly king like Saul. And then God says, okay, I'm going to give you some people to rule over you. You're going to go to the military. You're going to pay taxes. They're going to make a bunch of laws you don't agree with, and you're going to have to obey them, and you're going to have to smile when you do it. Those numbers, what do they represent? Who? Speed limit. Who drives them? I'll tell you, I knew about this last week. And I've been trying to go 55. We had a kid in the back seat last night said, Bumpa, I got to pee. <laughs> Grandma says, maybe Grandpa could speed it up just a little bit. I said, I'm going to preach about this tomorrow. You can pull over on the side. The 75, I got it. My car will hardly go there anymore. The 55, if you don't believe this, try it. It is very difficult because the police say they won't write you until you're going 60 or 58. The police are not God, and God has told us to obey the laws. I'm sorry. Try it. Should we just try it for a week, or should we just simply repent and drive 55? There's 10 cars behind you going to Mancelona, and they go by and tell you you're number one. <laughs> Trust me, last week I got it a lot. So I took the back road to Gaylord. I go on the Mancelona road, and there's trucks and trailers passing me. Is it the law or is it not? Did God tell us to obey the law, yes or no? We've just got too comfortable. We. I failed over and over last week, but I'm still going to continue to try. Simply because God told us to do it. And why do you think he told us to do that when we probably could go 58? Just because we rejected him. So here's one more thing. You rejected me, now live with it. You don't like your taxes? You don't like paying 27% to support my Social Security? Live with it. If it was just God, you'd have 10%. That's it. People, we have got just too comfortable. If God says it's sin, now this is a bigger picture. You can start drawing out what sin is in your mind. I was going to get the whiteboard and draw it out for you, but I thought we'd just establish we've all sinned to start with. If God says something's sin... And we legalize it. Well, in America, that's not sin. Or we normalize it. Well, everybody's doing it. Is it still sin? Yes or no? If God says this is sin, you see, how can we turn from something if we don't accept that it's sin? We're just going to waller in it. If God says this is sin, it's black and white, it's Old Testament, it's New Testament, it's now this is sin. But in America, it's legal. Is it still sin? 
In America, it's not legal, but we've normalized it. Everybody's doing it. Is it still sin? Thank you. I have to answer yes, too. How we treat our wives. If we watch the world, we just smack them around a few days of the week. We're doing a lot better. We could just physically and verbally abuse them because everybody's doing it. Does that make it right? I mean, I could go on and on and on to me. America has got some issues. And I'll say it right now. Well, if you don't like it, why don't you go someplace else? And I intend to. And that place is heaven. And if you just waltz up there big and proud and not humble with your America card, you might not make it in. And I'm not trash talking America. I'm talking about our values that we've just thrown away because we've tolerated sin. Us. Me and you. We've gone nose blind. I love that commercial. <laughs> the mom comes in. Now some of the teenage boys, once they get a girlfriend, they figure out, <laughs> but before the girlfriend, I mean, it's like, whoa! And have, we had a guy who used to work with us, and he had these tennis shoes. <laughs> he would attempt to bring him into the entryway in February, and Carol would say, Pat, outside. I mean, these tennis shoes, I don't think he ever changed his socks or if he wore You could smell him when he came up to the house. It's like, leave those shoes outside in the snow. He'd gone nose blind. But haven't we done that to what we watch on TV? What we tolerate in our homes? My wife is a million times better at me than this. How often do we have to think that God's tolerant to pain? That Jesus just likes to hear his name in vain? That God just likes to hear his name in vain in our home, in our castle, when you can simply shut it off. How many times is it? My wife, it's just the start of one. It starts getting loud, it starts getting cranky, and someone's about to say the Lord's name in vain, off. I remember years ago, I'd had a war movie. You know, going to learn about World War II. It was a documentary. One of the generals said, get your off. Honey, that wasn't a dollar movie. That was $3.95. She said, you just lost $3.95. That's not going to be in her home. She's not going to tolerate that. I need that same filter. Normalizing things, getting too comfortable. Just shut the thing off. We've gone nose blind. We really just don't understand our environment. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. You've heard it over and over. People politicize it. Uh, John Vernon's mom. If anybody of you know John Vernon, she just doesn't like it at all. If she listens to this message today, I'll get a call from her. That's not for you. That was back then. <laughs> you can't just use that. But so Second Chronicles seven and verse fourteen. You've heard it over and over, and I'll say it to you again, but maybe with some new meaning. If my people who are called by my name. I love the music today. I love it every day, but you're no longer a child of sin. or You're no longer a child of fear. You're no longer a slave. You're a child of God. We have a new name. When we become a Christian, every one of us should take that name. One of the many things I love about Haiti, and there's many of them, they get up 5 o'clock in the morning to go pray. I'm like, whoo! I always tease people about that other 6 o'clock. They get up at 5 o'clock to go pray. And they sing and they worship and glorify God. Many of the people, the teenagers, through the day are singing songs to God. And we just think that's so strange. Who's the strange ones? It's us who are not doing that. That realize God get us through another night. But when they take marriage... Jeff, I know your name. I know your wife's name, too. It's Madam Jeff. Just simple. You go to the market, what's your name? Madam Jeff. Oh, you're already connected. <laughs> There's Madam Andy over there. There's Madam Mike over here. Madam Steve down there. Madam Don. She took his name. When we take Christ's name, I hate to tell you, I'm not an American Christian. 
Boy, Jeff, did you just come to bash America today? <laughs> we got some issues, people. We have some issues. I am a Christian. I'll go one step further. I'm not a biker Christian. I'm a Christian who loves bikes. But the first emphasis on my name, the first emphasis on the syllable, is I'm a Christian. I just want Jesus. George Milton. There's maybe a few people in here who have heard him sing. George Milton sang this song, I Want to See Jesus. Every time I heard him sing that, he would just literally get to his knees almost. And he said, oh, I saw Abraham. I saw Moses. But I want to see Jesus. That needs to be our goal, people, is to go to heaven. I've been reading a lot about the Amish. Their tagline, their goal is to live such a holy life that we'll be in heaven. That's a pretty good line. They don't want to get stuff in the way. I don't want to be legalistic. I don't want to have my rules be your rules. I don't want my rules to be more than God's. But I do want us to follow God's rules. But I want to see Jesus. And I don't want any affiliation with anything to get in the way of that. And if you think for one minute that a politician is going to take you to heaven, you're wrong. And I don't care which party you think is the greatest. That party and their policies, from what I've heard, isn't even close to heaven. And if you're sick of corona and you're sick of COVID-19, I'm more sick of the political nonsense. That's just my opinion. That's like Paul would say. And I think God has the same opinion. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Second Chronicles 7.14. My people who are called by my name. We have a name. It's a new name. It's written down in glory. Lazarus had a name. The rich man did not. God didn't even consider him enough to give him a name. And Lazarus' name went to heaven. If my people who are called by name, my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, they will hear. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Mrs. Vernon, I'm sorry, but I do think this text applies to me because I carry Christ's name. I do need to humble myself. I do need to repent. I need to hear and seek God's face, as I think many of us do. Then Christ will heal us. It's a sobering thought, but we got to do it. Humble, pray, seek, turn. Okay. I'll get up and read every day. I'll pray every day. When we seek God, do we serve Him? I messed with Tim a little bit today. It's weird living through some different generations. My sister married a hippie guy who was in the rock band, so I've got a lot of music in my head that sometimes I just can't get out of there. So I wake up getting ready for this sermon, okay? What song is in my head? I want you, I need you, but ain't no way I'm ever going to love you. But don't feel sad, because two out of three ain't bad. Now, if I could really sing that, anybody got that song? Anybody know what that was? Meatloaf. Yeah, Meatloaf. Two out of three ain't bad. I'll tell you the album, nah. Okay, so is that not in reality... Not what we say, but is that not in reality how we live for God? I want you, God. It's all about me. I want this. I want this. Heal me. Make my marriage better. Give me a better job. Give me a better car. I want you, God. And I need you because you're the only way to get to heaven. But I'm not going to love you. I'm being honest. I love honest people. I've talked to a lot of people deep in sin, and they're just honest. I'll flat out tell you that they're in sin. They've done this. At least you don't have to go through a bunch of nonsense to figure out where they are to try to help them. So this songwriter, Meatloaf, was honest. I want you, I need you, but I'm never going to love you. But don't feel sad because two out of three ain't bad. Now, at times that's my relationship to God. You judge for yourself. You figure this out. I'm being very political with you. don't want to point fingers. Do you not want God sometimes? Always. Do you not need him? Always. 
But how about the love? God said, if you love me, you will obey me. 30, 55, 75. That's a little tiny one. How about honor your mother and father? How about do not steal? Ask her about Ten Commandments yesterday. Eight of the ten, if you disobey them, is legal in America. Eight of the Ten Commandments, we've legalized or normalized in the United States of America. Do the math. Go home and figure it out. People, we got trouble, and I'm not running for president. I just want our souls to end up in heaven. And I really believe if Malachi was here today, he'd say, you folks have gone nose blind. You've just tolerated a bunch of nonsense. You've just accepted what was sin to become normal. So for the movies, the music, think of the most godly person you can think of right now in your mind. Is it grandma? Is it the preacher's wife? Think of the most godly person you can think of. Sherry Johnson would be on my list. Andy's mom would be on my list. My mom would be on my list. Think of that. Lock it in. I want each one of you to have a name in your head of the most godly person that you know outside of Christ. Well, you could put Christ in there. Why not? Are you going to sit down and watch that movie with them? Lisa, come on overnight. We're going to watch a movie. <laughs> Here's the title. Last week at the family reunion, one of my relatives passing the phone around, laughing and giggling. <laughs> They're 60 years old, 70 years old. Oh, you probably don't want to look at this, but here, Jeff. If somebody warns you, you probably don't want to look at this or hear this, and then you look at it or listen to it, I think we've kind of... So somebody forewarned me, you probably don't want to look at this. And he hands me the phone. And I hand it back, fortunately, and said, you're right, I don't. How many times have we looked at it? Repent. Pray, read, serve. Serve. How do we return? Mother-in-law is 90 years old. She's in an independent living in Sheboygan. There's probably 100 people there. She's one of maybe 10 that get regular visitors. There's probably 90 people. You talk about COVID's bugging you. They won't let them out. We cannot go into her room. She's got to sit inside a screen door and we talk through her. Carol goes twice a week. How about those other 90? We have a long-term care. We have an assisted living here. I'll bet you if you called and said, could you give me a name of somebody? I could just write them a note, send them a card, and say I'm thinking about you. I'll bet you they'd say, yes, here's a name. Down there, you may be able to go visit. How are we serving? You know the Dead Sea? Anybody tell me what body of water feeds the Dead Sea? Hmm? No, no, it gets fed. It gets fed by one of the coolest bodies of water you can imagine, the Jordan River. It's like, whoo-hoo, the Jordan River is giving me all this good stuff. You know what the Dead Sea produces? Nothing. We get fed by God, and unless we have an outlet, we're going to die. We'll be dead in our sin. We can hear it. We can read it. We can pray it. But unless we serve, we're going to be dead, just like the Dead Sea. You ask a Jew, there ain't no better river than the Jordan River. There's holy water there, and it feeds the Dead Sea, but the Dead Sea doesn't give it to anybody. No plants, no fish. What about us? We get fed the Word of God every week by Andy. Do we ever pass it on to somebody, or are we just dead? Well, wow, that was the happiest message I've ever heard. <laughs> How about you? The good news is we have time to repent. And I believe it's going to be huge. You can practice, those of you who drive at 55. 
And if you can't tackle that one, look at your marriage. If you can't tackle that one, look at how you treat your kids. If you can't tackle that one, look at how you treat your employer. And if you're just grumbling about the people in authority, I think God gave them to us because we rejected him. Got a little song for you. <clears throat> this is one of the songs from Haiti. So we're going to get some words up on the board. We've got a translator, so you can't. Jeff was singing in tongues. So here's our translator. And if you dim the lights just a little bit, because this is a 5 o'clock in the morning song. Maybe we'll dim the lights. Here we're coming. And them professional singers, they always take a drink before they <laughs> clear out the pipes. You can dim them even more. It's a scary song. Okay, you ready? Memoi, memoi, Seigneur, grand goût pour présent tu, moi te vle we ou n'ayon lot niveau. Moi te vle we ou n'ayon lot niveau. Memoi, memoi, Seigneur, grand goût pour présent tu. Moi te vle we ou n'ayon lot niveau. Moi te vle we ou n'ayon lot niveau. All right. Here I am, Lord. I'm hungry. I'm hungry for your presence. I'm not hungry for some stupid sitcom. I'm not hungry for some reality TV show that I would be embarrassed to watch with you. I'm hungry for your presence, God. And I want it on a different level than what I had yesterday. We've had a couple of messages recently that one guy said, could you compete against the Christian you were yesterday, the one you were last week? We better be able to. Well, that's it, folks, and ain't no more. It's simply, I believe I'm in trouble because I've been tolerant to a bunch of nonsense. We've got some good examples around. I thank God for my wife a lot. She's a very good filter for me of some of the garbage I've allowed into my life. I hope all of you have someone like that. But we know what the bar is. And read Revelation. Jesus cast them away who tolerated that Jezebel. Are we or are we not? Who are we in that? Are we the Jezebel? Are we the one who tolerated a bunch of nonsense? And for us to make a difference in those schools and in our workplace, we got to change. We just do. But it's worth it because heaven's worth it. There's no death. There's no pain. There's no crying. And I want us all to be there. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. But I really think we've slid a long, long, long way. So how do we return? Pray, read, seek, and serve. God bless you. Then the real singers will come up. We call that a shotgun ending. Thanks, Jeff. Would you sing with us? We're going to sing a song called Jesus, Thank You. History of the cross I cannot comprehend The agonies of Calvary You the perfect Holy One Crushed your Son Who drank the bitter cup reserved for me In your blood has washed away my sin 
Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. By your perfect sacrifice, I've been brought near. Your enemy, you've made your friend. Pouring out the riches of your glorious grace. Your mercy and your kindness know no end. And your blood has washed away my sin. Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Lover of my soul, I want to live for you. Lover of my soul, I want to live for you. Lover of my soul. Washed away my sin, Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied, Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. Oh, Jesus, thank you. And your blood has washed away my sin. Jesus, thank you. The Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. Once your enemy, now seated at your table. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. You can have a seat. Good morning, church. We now come to our time of worship where we come around the Lord's table. And uh, as we do that this morning, I'd like to bring a, a story from the, the book of Acts. Uh, chapter 3, and to give you the context, uh, this event happens right after the church is born, and Peter preaches a spirit-filled sermon, and 3,000 men plus women and children come to Christ. Um, so at the very end of chapter 2, going into chapters 3 and 4, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer three in the afternoon. Now a man, crippled from birth, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When Peter and John were about to enter, they, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave, him, gave them 
his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking the man by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. And he jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and leaping and praising God. And those of you that grew up in the church, particularly if you attend a church camp, probably know a little song about that. Uh, they went on into the temple, and, and because everybody had seen that man day after day uh, begging, it, it really got their attention. Um, and, and gave gave Peter and John opportunity to preach another great sermon to the point that another couple thousand people came to Christ because it says in chapter 3 that the numbers grew to uh, about 5,000 <clears throat> based on the testimony they gave that Jesus Christ had healed this man. So while they're in the temple courts, the priests and the captain of the guard came uh, and, they, and they seized Peter and John and they took him, uh, uh, and because it was evening, they didn't put, couldn't put him on trial yet. They had to, they put him in prison overnight. Um, so they seized Peter and John because it was evening. They put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and their number grew to about five thousand. The next day, the rulers, and elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Ananias the high priest was there, and so was Caiaphas and John and Alexander and other men of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought to them, brought before them and began to question them, by what power or name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if you are if we are being called to account today for the act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this. You and everyone else in Israel know this. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you completely healed. For he is the stone that the builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone or the capstone. Salvation is found in no other name, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And that is why we are here at this moment to share the communion, to remember that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he came and uh, taught us how to live and showed us how to die and then through the power of God was raised from the dead. If you would uh, take your wafer. The night before he was crucified at the meal, Christ took the bread and broke it and passed it amongst them and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Now, if you prepare the cup, we'll pray just before we take it. Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity, the freedom to gather this morning. And I thank you for the technology that we have in place to be together, even if we are remote. We have gathered together in your name. Father, we thank you for the teaching this morning. We thank you for this simple emblem that reminds us of Christ's blood. And through Jesus' name, we are saved. Amen. Let's partake together. All right. Thanks, Dean. A couple of announcements before we pray over our offering and dismiss. 
Um, uh, let's see, announcement number one. Yes, we uh, started collecting gift cards. Uh, Lois Nation, who has been very active in our uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas that we ran for about five years, um, she was very active with that. She's very active and a very giving person. Um, they lost uh, their house in a fire about a week and a half ago. Uh, she also, more importantly, uh, lost her mother uh, in that fire. And we just were trying to figure out, how can we help? How can we bless you? How can we walk alongside you? And uh, they really are just being family right now. They're living in a, a small quarters right now while they figure out what it looks like to rebuild and things. Um, so we thought, what if we just do a gift card shower? You know, I'm sure that there's just stuff they could use. So there's a gift bag out on the table out there. And uh, over the next, uh, really, I'd like to do it next Sunday. Uh, so the next Sunday, you could bring in gift cards and just put it in that uh, gift bag. We'll take those to Lois and her family just to try to bless them and help them on their journey of, of kind of rebuilding, but be in prayer for their family uh, for obvious reasons, the, the loss of her mother, uh, but also just trying to rebuild and, and what they're looking at. So uh, that's going on. Um, this Wednesday, I'm trying to figure out what discipleship looks like as we uh, go through this pandemic and figuring out social distancing and everything, um, but I didn't want to let go of discipleship and just having opportunities. And so uh, this Wednesday, um, Daryl and I, you're now a co-host, okay? Uh, Daryl and I are going to co-host Bible study for men um, in front of the church, uh, weather permitting. If it's not permitting, we'll move it inside. Um, but uh, we're going to do a deep dive into Solomon, King Solomon, all right? And it's uh, every other Wednesday for five sessions, okay? And it starts this Wednesday. So if you want to join us, you're welcome to. It's at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., uh, Wednesday evening, out in front of the church. We're going to dive into Solomon. There will be homework, okay? And so, guys, you're welcome to uh, enjoy. Uh, you're welcome to join us uh, for that on Wednesday evenings. All right. Um, the KCC riders are kicking up next Sunday, um, so they've had uh, pretty good success with people joining them to ride their motorcycles. So, if you got a motorcycle and want to join them next Sunday, you're welcome to do so. And uh, I want to say thank you also to everybody that helped uh, fill our backpacks. And also, we raised uh, just under a thousand dollars to give to the high school uh, to fill all the packages for the senior or for the high schoolers coming in uh, to school this week. So let's give yourselves a hand. Nice job with that. Appreciate it. So normally uh, this time of service, we take up an offering, but we're not passing things. And so I would remind you, um, as I do every week, sorry, I feel like a broken record, but we have offering boxes in the back corners. Uh, you can give online at kccwired.com. You can text to give at all right, 84321, or you can send your tithes and offerings to P.O. Box 757, Kalkaska, Michigan, 49646, if you choose to worship uh, in that way. All right, after I pray, uh, the worship team's going to sing a closing chorus for us. If you would, as you are dismissed by the ushers, go out the side exits and then also the side exits of the, of the building. We'd appreciate that while we get things cleaned up for next service. All right, why don't you stand with me and let's pray. Father, thank you for the many blessings that you pour out on us. Um, thank you for uh, the opportunities that we have to be able to give to others and to share with others. Uh, Father, we think about the Nation family and the Cone family, and we just ask you to comfort them and bless them as they try to rebuild, um, but as they also are in the midst of mourning uh, their mother's loss. And I pray that you would comfort them and bring them peace and help us to be the church for them, whether it's a gift card or a phone call or prayers, whatever it may be. Help us to be the church to walk alongside them uh, during this time, Father. Uh, Lord, we want to ask that you would just bless those that have brought their gifts of tithes and offerings today, um, that you know the sacrifice that is being made, and we ask you to bless the families that are making that sacrifice today, and that you would bless those offerings to be used for ministry purposes as we try to reach a lost and dying world with the gospel. I thank you for the words that you spoke through Jeff today, Father, and I pray that we would take the challenge of just ridding our homes, ridding our lives of the things that don't honor you and don't show our love and adoration for you. Thank you for your mercy and your, your grace, Father God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thanks. Let's sing. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it my fears are drowned in perfect love You rescued me 
so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing I am a child of God Cause I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God Go be the church